Hello, God bless you abundantly. It's been a while since we last had the hour of word and prayer. God bless you. I've been away for about two weeks, uh, traveling and back and forth uh, for conferences and deliverance retreats. And uh, it's been an amazing journey. Um, but today I want to speak to somebody. As we start this month, uh, it's already begun. It began yesterday. Uh, about this specific month, actually the three months of October, November, and December are very tough months. Uh, there's a lot of demonic activity, especially in these last days. There's a lot of demonic activity. The enemy knows that his time is short, and he does not want people to make it to heaven. Uh, he attacks through sickness and disease, through, of course, sin and unrighteousness, temptations to sin, uh, so that people die. Uh, either through accidents, through all those kinds of things, drinking and driving. Uh, please watch out in these last days. There's a lot of things that are happening. Uh, I'm here to warn you, but most importantly, that Christ is coming back soon. He's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. Friends, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm here to tell you that unless one is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Christ said, unless one is born again, none shall see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. To be born again is to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You repent of your sins and then you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you will be saved. That's why Christ died on the cross. Praise the Son of the living God. And so that's the message and I'm here to preach and I'm telling you, friend, it is very real, very real. These last days that we're living in are the days that Christ warned, that Jesus Christ warned, that because of the lawlessness of the time, the love of many will turn cold. Let me tell you, love of many meaning the faith, the love for the things of God, the love for God. People will have love for things, for material things, for cars and houses and the pleasures of the world and christ warned that these are the days when you begin to see some of these things happening an untold sin and unrighteousness untold rebelliousness and i'm not here to judge or condemn anybody christ did not come to judge or condemn anybody neither should we as believers in christ jesus our personal lord and savior praise god i was uh, like that i was i did all kinds of things i and birds and did all kinds of things and so i'm here to tell you that that this is real only jesus christ can redeem us from those things and he died on the cross specifically to save you praise the son of the not to condemn not to judge you there will be a time for judgment there will be a time for condemnation but right now i am concentrating christ's purpose for us to concentrate on getting his people saved he died over two thousand years ago crucified on the cross for you and i the scripture says that god our heavenly father and we all come from our heavenly father made him who knew no sin and that is jesus christ the son of the living god to become sin for us that we may become the righteousness of god in him in other words what christ what god was doing was reconciling us to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And friend, I'm here to tell you that that is the truth. Today and forever, it's the same yesterday, today and forever. He was prepared as a, as, a, as a lamb without spot or wrinkle, way before the foundations of the world for you and revealed in these days, even as I speak right now, that you may be saved. You and I may be saved, praise God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so these are the days when we see a lot of lawlessness, when we see a lot of things happening, when I see people that are proud of being sinful, LGBTQI, pride, when we see all kinds of things, murders. In these last months, there's a lot of witchcraft and sorcery and voodoo and black magic. Uh, I'll just read the, the, in the news how some cartel uh, in Mexico, they clear, killed about 21 people. 21 people and the cartels in Mexico, let me tell you, they worship the spirit of death. The spirit of death, which is, I think, Santa Eria. Santa Eria, that's what they call it in uh, Mexico. For those of you who are from uh, um, Mexico, you know, even in the Spanish world, I think in South America, they are familiar with that spirit, Santa Eria. So there's so many things. It's people worshiping all manner of false gods. Do not be a partaker of that. Friend, I'm here to tell you 
that it is only through Jesus Christ that we can be saved. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Do not be deceived in the heart of deception, even in the so-called church. Uh, the, uh, I'm not going to name a church, but you know what's going on. In some of the churches that claim that there are many ways to God, some have started preaching that, that there are many ways to God. All right, I'm going to say it. In the Vatican, they're saying that there are many ways to God. There are not many ways to God. It is not through Buddhism or Hinduism or Judaism or Islam. It is not through religion. It is through Jesus Christ that we are saved. It is There are not many ways. There is only one way, and that way is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, nobody comes to the Father except through me, he said. And I'm here to tell the truth uncompromisingly. Friend, do not fall from the grace of God. Do not fall away from the love of God. That's what Christ said, that in the last days, because of lawlessness, the love of many will turn cold. And we've seen so many people, even people who are strong evangelicals, joining this movement of the so-called interfaith movement and interreligious council, and I don't know so many things, being deceived by this, this so-called uh, um, peace uh, 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 process through the interfaith movement that is trying to broker peace through the various religions and claiming that there are many ways to God. There are not many ways to God. There is only one way, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. And I'm reading that from Scripture, John 14, verse 6, in case somebody wants to know where we are getting that. So do not be deceived by that spirit of apostasy, the spirit of deception that is going on in the Vatican and elsewhere in the world, the interfaith movement that is lying to people that there are many ways to God. It is not through Islam, it is not through Buddhism or Hinduism or Judaism, it's not through Catholicism, it's not through religion of any sort, whether whatever denomination, but it is through Jesus Christ. It is not your denomination, my denomination, that saves, I don't have any denomination. I believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. That is what we need to do, praise God. That's why we need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and we'll be, we'll be saved, praise God. Listen to John 14, verse 6. The Word of God declares, when this man asked Jesus Christ, I think it was Nicodemus who did, Praise God. No, it was Thomas, I think. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? So this is Thomas, and some of you know Thomas is uh, doubting Thomas. This man had some questions that are helping us, and he's doubting. He had questions that are helping us even today. And so listen to what Christ responded. He says, Jesus, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's Christ saying. And he says, no one comes to the Father except through me no one comes to the father the father god is who we are talking about except through me christ said so do not be deceived that there are many ways this is only through jesus christ the son of a living god and christ said in john 3 3 praise the son of a living god this time talking this man nicodemus who was a religious man and his religious man he explained to him what it means to be born again so someone may be asking what does it mean to be born again how does one become born again? What is it anyway? Christ speaking to this man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, and he was called a teacher at the time. Christ was a prophet, a teacher, he was an evangelist, he was a pastor, he was a shepherd, a chief shepherd. He is everything, every one of those things. He still is. He wasn't. He is and he will forever be. Praise the Son of a living God. And the Spirit of God that He gives us is the Spirit of God that reveals these deep things of God and teaches us the things of God. Praise God. So listen to this. So this man, Nicodemus, wonders, uh, and coming by night, and said to Christ, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So he knew that he would, Christ was a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs, and clearly there were signs and wonders by the hand of God on Christ Jesus, because Christ was, a, was God. Praise God, who's the Messiah? He's the I am. He was the representation of God here on earth in this time. Praise God. He's the, the, the image of the invisible God. And so there were notable, notable miracles, signs, and wonders that were happening. I'm talking about lepers being healed, the blind eyes seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, the lamb walking, so many things that happened. Oh, the scripture says that if all the things that Christ did here on earth were recorded, 
A scripture says, I suppose there will be no book left here on earth. If all the things that Christ did, and yet, listen, in John 14, 12 to 14, Christ says that the things, the works that I do, you'll be able to do even more if you believe. So understand that there are certain things that God wants you and I to be, to, to, be, uh, to, to, to do, praise God. God working in and through us, praise God. And miracles, signs, wonders, people being saved, delivered from demonic oppression, delivered from cancer, delivered from sickness and disease, delivered from perverted dead and life, delivered from deafness, muteness, blindness, creative miracles that God wants to use you and I, but most importantly, for people to be saved in these last days. But we must be obedient. Praise the Son of the living God. That's what the scripture says. Praise God. There are so many things. And so this man, they say, you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. So this man, Nicodemus, a Pharisee at the time, creeping at the night, recognizes that, no, this must be the son of God. This must be the promised Messiah. He does not know it yet, but at least he knows that this man is from God. Praise God. In his earth. And some people see notable miracles by men and women of God being used by God, and they know that they're being used by God, but they're, they're, they're bound by religion, bound by religiosity. And this man, the Pharisee, was bound by religiosity. You may be that person that I'm speaking to today, and God is speaking to you. Come out of religion. Come out of Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, all the religions. There are so many world religions. Do not be deceived by the, the, the Vatican that is lying to you that, oh, oh you know what, let's respect one another, let's be tolerant to one another, let's be, they, they have these coinages of peace, tolerance, respect, coexistence. Let us tell the truth. I'm not talking about hatred, I'm not talking about hating a uh, Muslim, hating a uh, Judaist, hating anybody. I'm talking about telling the truth in love. It's not about tolerance. It's not about coexisting but telling the truth in love so that people may be saved. That is what Christ called us to do, to prick the gospel in Mark 16, 15 to 20. He says, go and prick the gospel to all creatures. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whoever does not believe shall be condemned. And that these signs shall follow those that believe. That's what Christ said. And that word is still true even today. And the promises of God are yes, and in him, amen. The signs shall follow those that believe. They shall take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly or poison, they shall not be harmed. They shall lay hands on the sick and shall be healed. That's what Christ is calling for you and I to do. Praise God, not to just coexist and be tolerant with one another without telling the truth. To be tolerant, the way these people coin this tolerance and coexistence and uh, peace, the so-called peace and uh, I say peace in quotes because it's not really peace that Christ died to give us. It is fake peace. While people are going to hell, people are dying and being sent to hell. If you are a true man or woman of God, a believer in Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you should be telling the truth. Not coexistence and telling people who are homosexual that, oh, you know, it's okay to be homosexual. Christ died for you when you know clearly that the scripture says, and I put the scripture up there, that those who practice such things will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. Listen to the scripture, and I'm quoting from scripture. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, the word of God declares, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicator. So if you're a fornicator, you're not going to make it to heaven. No idolaters. If you're practicing idolatry, and there's so many forms of idolatry today, even in the so-called church, in quotes. People worshiping Guadalupe, the Virgin Mary, Buddhists, but Buddhism, there's Hinduism and Judaism and Islam, there's all kinds of things. Even the so-called church, they bring idols in their church, the so-called church. A true church of God, a true church that is based on the foundation of Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And the power and moving and anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit does not bring any idols in the church. Christ is not an idol. Jesus Christ is spirit. God is spirit. Praise God. He's not to be idolized because some of these people have even idolized Christ. 
and making idols of Jesus Christ and worshiping in San de Janeiro. I think they have the biggest statue of Jesus Christ and people worship this thing. And we are not to worship anything in heaven, made, anything made in the image of anything in heaven. That's what the scripture says, Exodus 20 verse 5. We're not to, in other words, make a statue of God and worship that as God. But we see people worshiping these statues, worshiping even the cross. Christ is spirit. is not the cross. Christ is spirit. He died on the cross and he's alive. He was raised from the dead. Because he lives, we live also. The word of God declares in Revelation 1.18, I believe, that I am he who lives. Christ saying, I'm he who lives. Once dead, now lives forever and ever. Praise the Son. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. So we are not to worship God as though we are worshiping a statue. Yet there are some people that do that. And so, friends, this is one of the things. They say, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators nor idolaters, those who practice idolatry. And I can give you the scripture in Exodus 20, verse 5, for those of you who are, who are wondering. If you make even a statue of something in heaven and worship it, that's Virgin Mary, Guadalupe, and all those things that people are worshiping, that is evil. Listen to this. In Exodus 20, verse 4, in fact, it starts from verse 4. It says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, a carved image. So if you make a carved image of God or what you believe God to be like, and then you start worshiping that thing, that is idolatry. So it says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness, listen to this, of anything that is in heaven above. So any likeness of anything that is, whether it's an angel, whether it's God, or what you perceive to be God, or whether it is Jesus Christ, or you what you perceive to be Jesus Christ, and you make an image of that and you start worshiping it, when it's a cross and you start worshiping the cross instead of he who died on the cross that was raised from the dead, very much alive in his spirit. And that the only way we can access him is through accepting him as a personal Lord and Savior and have a relationship with him. Praise God. And so he says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. I'm talking about in heaven above. In heaven, not in the second heaven. We're talking about the third heaven. Or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water and the earth. So we can make, not make any carved image of anything. That is what it says. You shall not bow unto them, nor serve them. Or, 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 for I, the Lord your God, Christ, God speaking, Christ speaking, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me so if you practice that you hate god if you have any kind of idol even if it is you or your child or your wife that is idolatry so there's all kinds of things that people worship not just carved images idols are things that you put before god and god is spirit friends and so that is the scripture. But so this scripture, going about the scripture that I put up there, it says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. It's for those people who believe in LGBTQI. Oh, we, we love you, homosexuals. That's the way you are created. No, that's not the way they were created. We love you. Uh, yeah, I trust genders and all these kinds of things. We love you, yes. We love all those people, but we do not love them for what they do. We love them because God asks us to love them. God loved us first, all of us, before we, before we became born. He loved us while we had seen us. That's what it says. The scripture says. So all of us, yes, we've seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And who reconciles us to the Father? It is Christ, the Son of a living God. That's why he died on the cross. He loved us while we are yet sinners. That's what the scripture says in Romans 5, verse 6. Praise God. So it's not to judge or condemn anybody, but to tell the truth in love so that people, God's people, are saved from the wrath that is to come. Praise the Son of the living God. So it says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. If you are practicing adultery, what is adultery? Having sex outside of marriage, but also adultery in the realm of a spirit, worshiping little gods. That's adultery. No homosexuals, no sodomites. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards. No revilers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Friends, that means the scripture. That is the word of God and it is true. 
So if you're an idolater, an idolater, a homosexual, a drunkard, a reviler, an extortioner, a sodomite, I think he said sodomite. And you know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? And Christ made reference to Sodom and Gomorrah. And when he said in Luke 17, he said that just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the return of Christ. So as it was in the days of Lot, the days of Lot, Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. When there's a lot of homosexuality and sexual immorality and drunkenness and all kinds of things happening at the time. You know, when Christ says, as it was in the days of Lord, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. Understand that when Christ returns, that will be the condition. And even in these days, we're seeing that LGBTQI pride and abortion rights and all these other things that are contrary to the kingdom of God. Killing of babies. Hey, yes, even the things that happened in the times of Ahab's reign and that woman Jezebel's sexual immorality. That's another topic, but it is all the same. We see all that happening. And friends, these are the days we need to watch out. But anybody that practices those things will not make it to the kingdom of God. And we ought to repent if you've been doing those things, not to judge or condemn you, but to ask you to repent because Christ came to call sinners to repent this. He did not come to judge anybody or condemn anybody, but to call sinners to repent this. And friend, Christ does not desire that anybody perishes, but that we all come to full repentance. That if we repent of our sins, we, some of us used to do those kinds of things. We used to do all kinds of things. When you become born again, you are forgiven. Those things are forgiven. They're blotted out of the Lamb's, uh, um, the, 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 the Lamb's book, praise God. And your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, praise God. You know, the sin and unrighteousness is blotted out. And in place, your name is put as having accepted what Christ did on the cross, praise God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, praise God. And it's taken out of the book of death, praise God. The book of life is the Lamb's book of life. There's a book of death for those who do not accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior or remain in sin and unrighteousness. So there's, and the books are going to be open when Christ returns. Friends, let us not be revilers. Let us not be adulterers and fornicators. If you are doing those things, just repent. That's what Christ died for you and I, to repent that we may receive the free gift of life. Friends, the word of God declares in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ, the Son of a living God. And it is a gift which we receive by grace through faith, not because of our works, but because of what Christ did on the cross for each and every one of us. So loving was God that he sent his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. And it is through Christ. And the thief that our serpent called the devil did not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ, the last Adam, came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Is a life-giving spirit today that when you repent, when you and I repent of our sins and unrighteousness, it is that life that we receive from Christ Jesus, our personal Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, the rock of our salvation that saves us. From the wrath that is to come there is wrath that is to come there's death there's eternal death for those that do not believe those that do not accept christ as their personal Lord and savior there's going to be condemnation there's hell hell fire which was never meant for any human being but for satan and his demonic angels but unfortunately those that reject the son of god will be in hell and friends that's why i'm preaching this message today this message of love true love the truth being told in love, that you may not commit those things and that you may go to hell, but accept Christ by grace through faith that you may be saved. And friends, the word of God declares in Galatians 3, 13 to 16, that Christ became a curse for you and I because curse is the one who's hung on the tree. That's why he died on the cross. The tree is the cross. Curse is the one who's hung on the tree. That we may partake of the promise of the Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, by faith, we receive that by faith. And when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that's what it means to be born again. And we're going to go back to our scripture in John. Praise God. And enjoy all the blessings that God has purposed for his children that are obedient, that believe in they're, they're the Son of God. Praise God. As their personal Lord and Savior. Praise God. And so going back to the scripture, it says, No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, sodomites, homosexuals, adults, none of that idolatry will take you to the kingdom of God. But listen to this. It says, and such, praise God, where some of you, yes, some of us, we're doing those things. 
I can I can tell you I did all those kinds of things. Even supporting sodomy, uh, supporting uh, homosexuality, you're as good as practicing it. Because I was in organizations that supported those things. I'm not being political here. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Even Republicans have their own issues. But I'm telling you that anybody that supports anything that is contrary to the kingdom of God is on that side of those people that do those very same things. If you support stealing, if you support adultery, sodomy, and homosexuality and adultery, if you are in one with those things, if you agree with them, you support the agenda of those things, you, 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 you are against God. And listen to this. And such were some of you, says, but you are washed. So if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and say, this is what happens. You are washed, praise God. Washed with the watering of the word of God, with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why Christ died on the cross. The blood that was shed on the cross as of a lamb without spot or wrinkle, praise the Son of the living God, is to wash us from all sin and unrighteousness. Christ did not come to judge or condemn, but that we may repent. And once we repent of our sins, the precious blood as of a lamb without spot or wrinkle is what cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness. And those sins, those transgressions, those iniquities are blotted out. Of God's book, they're completely blotted out. So, in other words, what the enemy had against you, and yes, God has a recording of everything that we do here on earth. Once we accept the blood of Jesus Christ, once we accept the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross, we have forgiveness of sins. Once we repent, those sins are forgiven. They are remembered no more. Praise the Son of the Living. In fact, in Psalm and Psalms, I don't remember what the scripture says, just as the east is far from the west, so our sins and transgressions from us. And in Jeremiah 31, verse 34, it says, Our sins and transgressions are forgiven, they are remembered no more. That's why Christ died on the cross. How beautiful is that? Who does not want that? The free gift that comes from Christ, the Son of the Living God, the free gift of life that comes from Jesus Christ. The son of a living God. Their sins are not only forgiven, but you're given a new life. You become a new creation. All things pass away. You're transformed by the Spirit of God. That's what it says. But you are washed and you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So it is in the name of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God that we are sanctified, that we are purified by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, not loving our lives even unto death. So be in the name of Jesus. And let no enemy, no demon spirit try to condemn you because there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Once you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, unless you backslide like Lot's wife, and that's what Christ brought that story of Lot, that remember Lot's wife? As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, in these days of Lot, that's what he meant. In the days of Lot, it meant in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So shall it be at the return of Christ. He says, remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife had to look back to Sodom. When you come to Christ, do not go back. Do not look back. Just move straight forward. Lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us, each and every one of us, that we may be able to walk this race that is set before us with endurance. When you have the burgage of sin and the worries and the cares of the world, when you have all the burgage that the enemy throws at you, when you keep worrying and not believing in what God is able to do, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all we can have expect to imagine upon the power that works in us. When you do not stand firm on the word of God and the promises of God, which are yes and amen, then you are holding burgage. Which baggage, which cares, which worries, they are bog you down and stop you from reaching the destination, which is heaven in Christ Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Praise the Son of the Living God. So he says, But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The Spirit of God is who we need in order for us to be able to walk upon the will of God. Now go with me back to John 3. Praise God. As we uh, continue with the study of this man, Nicodemus, who is asking about the born-again experience. What does it mean to be born again? You may be asking as well. And so, seeing that God was using Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He was God. He is the I am, the same yesterday, today, and forever, who is, was, and is to come. Still God. The one that was there in the beginning was with God, was God. Is God. Will forever be God, who created you and I, created everything on earth. Praise the Son of a living God. 
And so God using him, him um, miraculously to save, to, to, to heal the sick, to heal the lepers, to raise the dead. Yes, so many people were raised. Who are dead? Clearly, God with him. And so Nicodemus wondering, and listen to what he says. And Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, so in other words, for these miracles, for these signs to happen, for the for God to walk with you, for notable miracles, which Christ say, these signs shall follow those that believe. Urababashanda. You shall lay hands on the sick, speak in new tongues, cast out them. In order for that to happen, you must be born again. But today we have a church where people go with sickness and disease. They are not healed. People go with the, uh, all kinds of the blind eyes and deafness and muteness and all kinds of sickness and people are not delivered why are they not delivered because the church is dead the church has compromised the gospel the church does not have the spirit of god not all the church there are some great churches out there where we've seen miracles signs and wonders a visible manifestation of the presence of god that's where we all need to be and that's why i'm preaching this gospel and it has to be personal for us to praise god when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and once you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you begin to see the visible manifestation of the power of God in and through you. I always give my testimony that Christ healed me from asthma, healed me from all kinds of things. I'm telling you. I used to wheeze and wheeze and have difficulty breathing and all kinds of pains almost everywhere. Of course, my drinking did not help at the time. And I'd been a smoker about four years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, four years before I became born again, 10 years ago. I think I stopped smoking in 2004. And I became born again in 2009. So five years ago, I but the effects of smoking, drinking, and, and you know, the sickness of asthma did not help. But when I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, all these things started, God bringing the healing, delivering, delivering. And now I'm I'm asthma free. I'm cancer free. I'm I don't have cancer. I don't have any kind of sickness and disease. I know I don't have any disease because I believe in the healing power of Christ, the Son of the Living God. The Word of God declares, "Praise the Son of the Living God." And somebody may be suffering from those kinds of things. I'm here to tell you the good news that it is only through Christ that you can be healed supernaturally. Praise the Son of the Living God. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement that brought peace was upon him. By his stripes, the Word of God declares, we are healed. He bore our infirmities and sicknesses, our griefs and sorrows, according to Isaiah 53, verse 4, and Matthew 8, 17. So you do not have to carry the baggage of sickness and disease. I feel so grieved when I lose my friends. I just lost a friend of mine uh, from Uganda. That I used to go to school with, and I, I say, Lord, why? Lord, why? And even men of God, women of God, uh, recently we lost a great woman of God, a prophet of God. I feel so certain. Pastors, last year I lost so many pastors. Even this year. Child of God, you don't have to die of sickness and disease. We must fight this thing. We must fight cancer. We must fight every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. Because God has given us the power authority to trample upon those serpents and scorpions. Praise God. Of sickness and disease. It starts with our hearts. Our hearts being right with God. Submitting to God. Repenting of our sins. Yes, sometimes it's through, sick, uh, through our own uh, sin and unrighteousness. But sometimes the enemy is just attacking you. You am of God, woman of God. Yes, you've done all the things that you need to do, but yet maybe you do not eat right. And yes, the enemy can, do you know that the enemy can give you a test bag for foods that are not healthy, tricking you into something so that you die before your time? I've been there, I'm telling you. There's a time I dreamt and I, I was, I dreamt I was eating all kinds of unhealthy foods and said, what is this? Why was I eating all these unhealthy foods? At the time I knew it was wrong. But lo and behold, the next few weeks, I started binging on things and food that was not right. And I was ballooning. And I knew it was an attack in the spirit. That's how the enemy attacks. It gives you a test bad for things that are not, not right. Because the purpose of the enemy, the whole purpose of the dragon, that old serpent called the devil, is to steal, kill, and destroy. So that you die of heart disease. So that you die of blood clot or high blood pressure. All kinds of things. That's what the enemy plans. And people don't know this, that the enemy works even through food. Binging on food. 
So, so you're a man of God. Yes, you do not drink. You do not do all these things. You do not go to bars. You do not practice sexual immorality. But the enemy attacks you through food. And yes, you go to heaven. But why die before you die? That's called untimely death. And we're seeing all those kinds of things, especially in these holidays. That's what the devil does. And people binge on food and then they have heart disease and they have all kinds of things and have blood pressure. And I rebuke that spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease, the spirit of death and Hades, the spirit of untimely death from Satan in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you this truth in love. These are the things that happen in the realm of the spirit that the church does not talk about. Oh, they say, oh, it's just delicacy. It's just, it looks innocent for you to eat a little bit of chocolate. Before you know it, you need more and more and more and more. And before you know it, you have sicknesses. You have all kinds of things. And for us, we're a little old above, you know, those years where this, our body cannot shed off fat as fast as we used to. You know that this thing is going to cause sickness and disease. And that's the plan of the enemy. And so when I lose my friends, when I lose, I feel so sudden. And I am here to teach this truth in love, friends. And we ought to take care of ourselves. Even as we pray, we must take care of our health. Do exercise. I'm one of the people that are lazy in doing exercise. And, and I need to work on that. But at least I do certain things. Now I'm very careful not to just eat wrong foods. Because I know that's the plan of the enemy to take people before, before their time. And I pray for those people who have lost their loved ones, for you to be strengthened. But if you're still alive today, please try to eat right. Try to take care of your health. Do exercise if you can do exercise. As we pray, we must pray for one another. Always pray. Yes, we can cast out demons. I've been in uh, uh, conferences. I've, I've had testimonies of people that have lost weight dramatically spiritually supernatural god making someone lose weight fat women losing weight all of a sudden about 20 pounds supernatural like that yes those kind of miracles can happen when your heart is right with god but we don't have to wait for that let's prevent it live healthy as we pray for one another praise god because god wants to use you praise god in mighty ways so that people may be saved praise god so as we Pray for one another. Let us eat healthy. Praise God. In Israel, God gave specific diets during the times of the old covenant for Moses and the children of Israel. The foods that they were supposed to eat, foods that were, yes, somebody may call it law today. Oh, that's according to the law. Now we can eat anything. Yes, you can eat anything. But even today, there are specific diets that will keep you alive. That will keep you in good health. And there's a reason why God gave specific instructions, fruit and things. He gave them all kinds of diets that were good for them. Praise God. Yes, you can eat anything today, but still you can't just start eating fat because they told you to eat anything. You eat every fat thing that you come across. I'm saying these things, these things this truth and love, so that we may all be saved, friends. Because these months, there's so many people that get sick, emergency visits and all kinds of things. People who have um, conditions that are uh, pre-existing conditions and they're exacerbated by their eating habits. So as we pray, and I'm a man of God, I'm telling you that we are going to pray, yes. But we, as we pray, you got to take care of yourself. Take care of your eating habits. Protect yourself because that's one of the plans of the enemy that the enemy has used to attack the church because, oh, we don't drink, we don't do all kinds of things. Now you can just eat anything else. After all, God said you can eat anything. But if it is eating anything, then, of course, it, drinking wine, you, you can drink wine. You, you have to be responsible for what you put in your body. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't want to go there, but this is the scripture. And so Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. And so Nicodemus said to him, ask this question that to some may sound stupid, but this man was confused. He did not understand what it meant to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? And some people today don't still don't understand what it means to be born again. To be born again is to accept Christ, to repair of your sins, accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And God is spirit. Once you do, then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is what Christ explains, praise God. So Nicodemus asks, asks Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? So in others, you're 50, you're 40, or you're 30, how can you be born again? 
you go back to your mother's that's what he has can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born this was a stupid question today you you can even see it stupid yes the, this was a learned man a man a pharisee a man of a secret a man of the law who knew the law and yet he did not have a revelation of what it means to be born again he did not have that revelation and today you are blessed that you having this revelation you having this revelation, praise God. God is using me, and I want to glorify God to reveal this truth to you, praise God. And so this is what Christ answered. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, water and of the spirit, water, what is to be born of water? To be born of water is not just uh, baptism, water baptism. It is not even the water baptism is a confirmation of you accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. To be born of water is to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The watering of the word, the salvation that comes from what Christ did for us and you receiving the message of Christ, you receiving Christ in the spirit and you receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit which Christ said, Unless one is, is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what he meant, to be born of water and spirit. He said, if any man thirsts, in John 7, 38, he says, if any man thirsts, let them come to me. If you thirst, and I don't know about you, but I thirst on a daily basis. I thirst for the, 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 the watering of the word. I thirst for the spirit of God. I thirst for the things of God. If any man thirsts, let them come to me. Whoever believes in me, out of their innermost beings shall flow rivers of living water. What he meant was the Spirit of God. Out of our innermost being, once we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, flows the Spirit of a living God, the things of the Spirit. Praise God. Not in and of ourselves or in our strength, but because we have accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. That's what it means to be born again. Then you begin to understand why you were created. You begin to understand the purpose for which you were created, the divine purpose. We talked about divine purpose in the last uh, weeks. The, the eternal, according to God's eternal purpose, your divine calling, why were, were you created? So you have a revelation of that if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Once you are born of water and spirit, having uh, repented and accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and receiving the free gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Spirit by faith, and then you begin to see the spiritual blessing that God has purpose for you to walk in, and you will walk in them. Praise God. I was called to do this. I was called to, to teach the word of God. I was called to preach the gospel. All of us have been called to preach the gospel. I was called to be a pastor. Praise God. And I'm in the process. Praise God. Here where I am in Texas, or pastoring. Praise God. And we go through a process. Praise God. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, then God begins to work in and through you. Praise God. Molds you, sanctifies you by His Spirit, by His Word, the watering of the Word. Why am I talking about the watering of the Word? Born of Word and Spirit. If you go with me to Ephesians 2, praise God. Actually, it's Ephesians 5, 27. Praise God. This is what it says. Talking about Christ's relationship with the church as similar to the relationship with the husband and the wife. It says, husbands, love your wives in Ephesians 5, 25. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Christ laid down his life for you and I. Praise the Son of Living. And he loves us just as the Father loved us and he sent him. So is Christ who died for the forgiveness of us. Since the Lamb of God had to lay down his life for you and I that we may be saved. That is love, unconditional love. And he says in verse 26 that he might sanctify so the purpose of himself having given his life on the cross was to sanctify and cleanse her, cleanse who? The church with the washing of water by the word. So the baptism of water, the washing of the water by the word of God is the baptism of the water. Once you receive that truth, it cleanses you, it sanctifies you that whatever the enemy does or says, the enemy can no longer change you because now you've been sanctified by the watering of the word. Oh, the enemy will continue to attack and tell you all kinds of things. Or you think you're a son of God. You think you're a daughter of God. That's what he did to even Jesus Christ. He'll try to challenge your identity, but you must stand firm on the word of the Lord. That's what it means to be born again. Once you're born again, you're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit that the enemy now can no longer intimidate you. Oh, he may send all kinds of things, even in dreams and the realm of the spirit, but you are going to be 
ever to stand firm on the word of God. Listen to this. So he says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, present her to himself, present you and I, the church, to himself. Listen to this. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she, she, the church, uh, should be holy and without blemish. Now you understand that that's the purpose for which Christ died on the cross, that we may be sanctified, that we may be presented, that we may be reconciled to the Father through Christ, the Son of the living God, that we may be presented a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, without any blemish, because he is coming back. Friends, Christ is coming back for a holy and unblemished church. A lot of people don't want to talk about holiness, but let me tell you, that if you continue in sin and unrighteousness, you're not going to make it to the kingdom of God. We must be continuously changed, sanctified. And that's only in the spirit. It has to be through the born again experience. That's the importance of being born again. That we do not follow religion and dogmas of men and all oh, this wild religion, this wild, this wild view and this, this and that. But follow Christ, the son of a living God. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of a living God. So listen to this. It says, most assuredly, going back to John 3, verse 5, it says, Christ saying, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Listen to this. So in other words, we have fathers and mothers, and we, are, we have to come into this world. Praise God. And we thank God for our mothers and our fathers, because without them, we would not be here. That's why we must honor them. Praise God. Honor God first and honor your mother and your father. Praise God. For them, uh, honor God for, for your mothers and fathers, praise God, because without them you would not be here, praise God. Anybody that does not honor their father, mother, uh, whatever it is that they did, praise God, you don't honor them for what they did if it's evil, but for bringing you into this world, praise God. And pray for them, pray for each and every one of them, praise God. So he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. So we come into this world through flesh, through being born, praise God. The first time. But how many of you know that when we come into this world, because of the sin of Adam and Eve, there was disobedience, rebelliousness that brought sin and unrighteousness and curses on every human being that is born of flesh. Praise God. That is the purpose for which Christ died on the cross. And the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45, is the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. He died on the cross the last Adam, a life-giving spirit, that we may have life, that we may be born again, born of spirit. And this is what Christ was talking about. He says, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. In other words, when we become born again, what does it mean to be born again? Is that your spirit, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, having repented of your sins, praise the Son of the living God. You accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, receive him in your heart. Your spirit is born again. It is connected to the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the purpose for which Christ said, if anyone does to them, come to me. Whoever believes in me, out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Speaking of the spirit, that's what it means to be born of water and spirit. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Born of flesh is flesh. Born of spirit is spirit. Praise God. And friends, that is why Christ died on the cross for you and I. That we may walk in the spirit, that we may walk in the spiritual dominion, the spiritual dominion that Adam, the first Adam, gave away to Satan, that all serpent called the devil, who did not come but to steal, kill, and destroy, stole the dominion and brought curses of hatred. And yes, the hatred we see it in the very sons of uh, the first two sons of Adam, Cain killing Abel, being jealous of the, the, um, the uh, offering. That please God that Abel gave and now killing his brother. And we see the first death in the Bible. And then after that, all the killings that you see today as a result of all that sin, the curses that were brought as a result of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. The strife, the racism, the bitterness, the anger, the sexual immorality. In the Bible, we see all kinds of sexual immorality, incest, and all kinds of things that are not right. Sodom and Gomorrah times, you see homosexuality. In the times of Noah, God had to, to wipe away everything on the earth with the exception of Noah and his wife and three of his sons, three, three of his sons and their, 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 their uh, wives and the rest animals. Eight human beings, only eight human beings saved. And friends, let me tell you that when Christ talks about that, 
and reminding us that just as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. Just understand that these are the days which even Christ said that getting into heaven is going to be harder than a camel going into a, through a needle's eye. The narrow gates of heaven require that you stand firm in faith. Require that you stand firm in faith. Do not waver to the left or the right. Do not waver. Overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Not loving your lives, even unto death. Praise God. Even unto death. And I'm, close, I'm going to close this. Praise God. Tomorrow I'll talk some more. And this week I had planned, um, uh, you know, I pray for the grace of God to continue um uh, to, to study the scriptures of Revelation, the, the book of Revelation that uh, gives an account of Christ's warning to the seven churches in Asia Minor, which speak of even today's churches that are doing those things. So we're going to start those series and prick them before, we're going to prick them again. Because these are the days. Christ warning us that let us be careful, friends, let us be careful. But to someone who's not yet a born again believer, this is your time. And even that person who was backslid, back, back who maybe went back to the ways, the old ways, the scripture today is for you. That if you repent of your sins, and this is not to judge or condemn anybody, that if we repent of our sins, the scripture says in 2 Chronicles 7 14, that if my people, that are called by my name, shall seek my face, shall tie with them. It says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, seek my face, God's hand, and tie away from their wicked ways, and pray, then I'll come down and heal their land. And in America, we see so many things. Not just America, we see so many things in Europe, Asia, Africa, South America. Things that are not right. Things that are not right, friends. And I'm praying today. In the mighty name of Jesus, that people are delivered, that we are delivered. We're all delivered because we are waiting for the same Christ. He's going to come back. The same way he left, he's coming back. I can ask 11. He left in the cloud, ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God, and he's coming back soon. Romans 10, 9 to 10, it says that if you confess, this is how you become born again, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And friends, Christ is our righteousness. We are the righteousness of God through Christ, the Son of the living God. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So we confess with our, with our mouth, but we believe in our hearts. We believe in our hearts unto righteousness. We confess with our mouth unto salvation. And as we're not ashamed to say that Christ is our Lord and Savior. That's, we, we're not telling people, we're telling a certain and yes, there are people that are being used by Satan. We decree and declare that we are born again. That's the confession. And it, what we confess must be in our hearts, praise God. Not religiously. I know there's so many doctrines of faith, uh, creeds of faith in very many denominations. People confess, but they do not even mean what they confess. You must mean what you confess. To follow Christ, you must carry your cross. It means crucifying the flesh, dying to sin, becoming dead to sin, and being alive in Christ. And so it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. So if you believe in your heart that God has raised him, you must believe that God raised him from the dead. Because we do not preach a Christ that was crucified and stayed on the cross, but Christ that is raised from the dead. Christ said in Revelation 1.18, I am he who lives, once dead, now lives forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Praise God. So it's not just about our death, but it is his resurrection. Once we believe that, then we are believers, praise God. And then we follow him and crucify the flesh. Because when we accept what he died for, which is died for your sins and my sins, then we must also crucify the old self, the sin and unrighteousness. And now live a new life under Christ. Become dead to sin, what Paul says in Romans 6. Become dead to sin and alive in Christ. Praise God. Not Try to cover up sin and say, oh, you know, Christ died for all our sins, but then you can still do a little bit of sin. After all, Christ died. You must become dead to sin and alive in Christ. Praise God. That is the true gospel. Listen to this. 
So it says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. If you believe in Christ, and that's the starting point, that's the greatest miracle, believing in Christ and receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior. You'll not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. And I was talking about this salvation having come for both Jews and Greeks and the Gentiles, everyone on the earth. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. So he says, it's for neither, rather, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord of all is rich to all who call upon him. So he's rich to all and for all who call upon him. If you call upon Jesus Christ today, you'll be saved. In fact, it says in verse 15, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is this that I, uh, our prophet Joel said in Joel 2, 38, by the Spirit of God, that in the last days God is going to power his spirit upon all flesh. Our daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. There are signs in heaven and on the earth below. A blood moon, a darkened sun, before the great and awesome day of the Lord, before the return of the Lord, and that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He repeats it in Acts 2, 17 to 21. Friends, these are the days that if we receive Christ, we're going to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. We're going to see mighty things. Yes, other people are going to be suffering, those who reject Christ, that is. But if you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to see a mighty move of the Holy Spirit, salvation of souls, miracles, signs and wonders. People being saved, if you make the sacrifice right now, and it is a sacrifice, Paul said in Romans 12, 1 to 2, that I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. It is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. Holy and acceptable to the Lord. That which is a reasonable service. Not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may know that which is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. So be it. And I pray for Israel because some in Israel have rejected Christ. Some Jews that have resumed the sacrifices, practicing Judaism and rejecting the Son of God, the Messiah. Let us pray for Israel. Not just Israel, let's pray for the rest of the world. But especially Israel because it was through, through the Israelites that Christ came. And I feel pain when I see so many that are still practicing Judaism. And we, formerly Gentiles, being uh, um, reconciled to the Father, and receive this gospel. I pray that every Jew and Gentile that has not yet accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior to receive this truth. Because it is only through Christ that we are saved. Not through any religion, not through any denomination, but through the person of Christ, the man Christ Jesus, that died on the cross, was raised from the dead, is sitting at the right hand of God, and is coming back to judge the living and the dead. And may God bless you abundantly. But if you want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please, this is the time. And say these words with me, and you'll be saved. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies. And I recognize that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and I have transgressed against your law. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, the son of God. That died on the cross, was raised from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and take church over my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I want to walk with you and according to the will of God. And I thank you for the free gift of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Friends, if you say that prayer, you are a believer. And it is in these days, friends, that Christ said that those that are on his side shall do mighty exploits. Those that know their God shall do mighty exploits. And first Corinthians 2 9, the word of God declares, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man. Nor has it entered the heart of man. What God is going to do for those that love him. Praise God. And these things God is going to reveal in the spirit. 
And there's certain attacks. Yes, there are a lot of shakeups in government. You see shakeup. You see shakeup in the government, in the White House. You see shakeup in the Congress. You see shakeups everywhere in the world. Do you know why there's a shakeup? This is what Christ said. And then, great man of God, Paul said, yes, yet once more, God said, a confirmation of what God said in Haggai 2, verse 46, I believe. Yet once more, he's going to shake up, not just the earth, but the heaven and the earth. What did he mean? That those things that are of God, those people that are of God, that are standing from the word of God, are those who remain. Yes, there's a shake up. Anything that is not of God, even in families, in churches, there's going to be a shake up. That shakeup is to prepare the return of Christ. It is, first of all, to prepare for the mighty harvest of souls, which Christ said, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But we don't need to pray that the Lord of the harvest may send laborers in his harvest. The harvest is of the Lord. And so, yes, when you see shakeup in your personal life, just know that God is dealing with those issues, even in your heart, that are not right, so that you may be sanctified, purified, by the Spirit of God. So that you are prepared because let me tell you the times that are to come are going to be so tough the tribulation that is going to come it's already beginning we see it only people who are not faint-hearted shall stand those who are strong in faith shall stand if you have accepted christ as your personal lord and savior if you have repented or renewed may god bless you abundantly you are a believer the scripture says, for those that accepted Christ, he gave the right to become children of God in the kingdom of God. Praise God. We're going to worship, and this song is called Magnify, Be Magnified. It's by Steve Swanson. And I do believe that it's going to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. As we close, I don't want to go beyond one hour. Because that's sometimes too long for Cancer some people. And I want us to just uh, are worship, be in the presence of God. We dedicate this month to Christ. It's a month of, like I said, so many things happening. A lot of people dying. But we decree and declare that we shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. And if you have any, any family member, anyone that is sick, that is going through any demonic oppression, I'm beginning to decree and declare. In fact, let me just pray. Uh, that anybody that has any kind of sickness, they are set free. Anyone in any area, in any place, or who's going through any kind of struggle with sin and unrighteousness, even homosexuality, adultery, fornication, pornography. So many people, I have so many people on this uh, forum that some practice all kinds of things. But I'm here to let you know that God can set you free from those things. Absolutely nothing is impossible with God. He died to set each and every one of us free from demonic oppression, from sin and unrighteousness. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And so I decree and declare that you are set free for whom the Son, for whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Praise the Son of the living. And the word of God declares, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty is in Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God, that we may all be transformed into the likeness and the image of Christ, the image of God that we were created in. And Christ is he who transforms us. Praise the Son of God by his spirit, by his spirit, because he's the image of the invisible God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies for each and everyone that is listening at the sound of my voice. Lord my God, I pray that you sanctify each and every one of us, transform our minds, Lord my God. Jesus, may your will be done, Lord my God. And Lord, you coming back for a holy and unblemished church, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. May your will be done, Jesus. For our family members, for each and every one of us, Lord. May your will be done, not our will, Lord my God. That even while we struggle with so many things in our hearts, Lord my God, some people's hearts have failed, some have committed suicide. We decree and declare that the spirit of suicide, the spirit of depression, is bound right now for that person that they may be considering to die, to commit suicide because of the troubles and the worries and the cares of the world. Any spirit of unbelief, any spirit of fear, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. For your word declares you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, you did not give us a spirit of bondage again to fear for those that are led by the Holy Spirit that are children of God. And you did not give us a spirit of bondage again to fear but a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba Father. Heavenly Father, have your way. 
for the spirit of God himself witnesses to our spirits that we are children of God and if children hairs join hairs with Christ knowing that if we suffer we'll be glorified together with him that even as we go through persecution and everything that the enemy has thrown at us Lord my God we decree and declare that you are our redeemer and you live because you live we live also may your will be done Jesus we bind every spirit of perversion last of the eyes of a flesh of hurt every spirit of adultery and fornication every spirit of infirmity sickness and disease every spirit of cancer every spirit of diabetes any spirit of sickness and disease let it be bound today in the name of Jesus any spirit of religion any spirit of untimely death any spirit of voodoo black magic sorcery divination witchcraft of any sort i begin to decree and declare according to your word in numbers 23 23 that there is no divination on the children of israel there is no divination or sorcery against jacob so it is for the children of god there is no device divination no sorcery against the children of god there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper any time that goes against us is condemned right now in the name of jesus any witchcraft spells any word curses prophetic curses any word spoken against us we bind it right now in the name of jesus we decree and declare that the promises of god are yes and in him amen lord my god we decree and declare and receive all your promises lord my god in the mighty name of jesus the son of the living god we decree that we are healed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, by the Lamb of God that was slain for the of our sins. Oh, Shandra Bashakaya, any heart disease, any blood pressure, any spirit of clot, blood clot, any plan of the enemy, any snare, any trap, a ring for our sake, any evil force of darkness, please, by the empower, signing against us from hell, any snare and trap, we nullify, we dismantle in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Hurra Baba Shandra Baba Shakaya. And Lord, we submit our marriages to you, King of Kings, and decree and declare Ephesians 5, Lord my God, 21 to 33, over our marriages. We decree and declare that the marriage bed is sanctified, is undefiled. Whatever demonic forces of darkness, principles, and powers have, that have defiled our marriages, let them be bound right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of sexual immorality, adultery, and fornication, anything to do with the Antichrist. Even as I speak in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that our marriages are protected by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So be it. In the name of our names, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So be it. We cover ourselves in the precious blood of the Lamb, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our children, we cover them in the blood of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over their souls, in the name of Jesus. The steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I pray that you order our steps, Lord my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's put a perverted, dead, luck, sickness, and disease. We bind today in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And the man of God, King David, said he had been young and he had grown old. He had never seen the righteous forsaken all his children beg for bread we shall not beg for bread for you are the bread of life jesus christ my lord my god who said whoever receives me shall never hunger whoever believes in me shall never thirst lord my god i pray you quench our thirst and hunger in the mighty name of jesus in the spirit lord my god for man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the lord may your word prevail oh your word is our bread lord my god Oh, it quenches our thirst and every hunger. It is spirit and it is life, Lord my God, to our souls. King of kings, have your way. Oh, in the name of Yeshua. That even in these last days, we decree and declare that we are victorious in Christ Jesus. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Oh, we serve a mighty God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Oh, we can never expect to emerge upon the power that works in us. Spirit of a living God, have your way. Lord, we pray for the church, for the apostles, the teachers, the prophets of God, the evangelists, Lord my God. Oh, the pastors in these last days, Lord my God, even as you say the last, that the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But we not only need to pray that the Lord of harvest may send laborers in his service. I pray, King of kings, Lord of lords, King of glory, that you send laborers in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is in birth, that is in drug addiction, that is anywhere in any place, even those in prostitution, everybody that is in any kind of place that is then 
oh not to be lord my god i pray that you harvest those souls send harvest or send laborers lord to get them out that they may join my lord my god the harvest even as i speak in the mighty name of jesus even in hollywood my lord my god in the entertainment industry lord my god in the entertainment industry everywhere in even in politics lord in congress in the white house everywhere in the world a harvest of souls i speak it into existence lord my god and we shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass even as your word declares in job 22 28 so be it lord my god there are those who have pain lord my god pain in their hearts wounds in their hearts that have been wounded lord my god because of some offenses i pray that you bring healing in their hearts my lord my god you are our comforter our counselor you are the lord of glory the king of kings the lord of lords the alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and last he who is was and is to come and lord we submit to you we magnify your name jesus arise jehovah let your enemies be scattered even as i speak in the name of jesus Lord, I thank you. Oh, that you're delivering that man, the woman who's a lesbian, who's a homosexual, transgender, whatever it is that they call themselves, that you do not call them, Lord my God, that you died for each and every one of them, even those adulterers, the prostitutes. We do not judge anybody, Lord my God, for you do not come to judge or condemn, but to call sinners to repentance, to call my Lord my God, that which was lost, Lord my God, who shunned the to save that which was lost. Have your way, King of Kings. Even the Muslims, Lord my God, in the mosques. Get them out, Lord my God. Those in the synagogues, in the, the, the Jewish temples, Lord my God, get them out. Save them, each and every one of them, Lord my God. Rabba Shakaya, the church that has strayed from the faith, Lord my God, that is believing false doctrines, doctrines of demons, doctrines of Balaam and Balak, my Lord, doctrines of Je Jezebel, and her sexual immorality, immorality and idolatry. I pray you get them out. Get them out, Lord my God. Get them out in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Presidents, kings, queens, mayors, governors, we pray for each and every one of us. Judici those in the judiciary, those, my Lord, my God, in Congress, whether Democrat or Republican, whatever party they belong to, Lord, my God, King of Kings, you are the King of Kings, you're the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the King's heart, Lord, my God, are in your hand, you turn it any way you want, King of Kings, have your way. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, the name, above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, so be it. Any spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, and divination, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Any spirit of pornography, masturbation, anything to do with the devil, any evil demonic serpentine spirit, any marine spirits, lying spirits, seducing spirits, are bind in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Nephilim spirits from the devil, we bind in the name of Jesus. In these last days, there's a lot of demonic activity. The devil knows his time is short. That's why he's unleashing all this havoc around. But if you stand firm on the word of the Lord, you will prevail. Oh, the scripture says that Christ is sitting in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. He won. He made a public spectacle of, all, of spectacle of all principalities and powers and triumphed over them on the cross. And so are we who are with him seated at the right hand of God together with Christ. Yes, we rule. We reign. We rebuke every spirit of evil. Oh, by the power of authority given to me in Luke 10, 19, Luke 9, 1. I trump upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. I dismantle the network of evil. In the name of our own names, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, so be it. That whatsoever thing we bind on earth, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thing we lose on earth, We'll be loosened in heaven. We'll loosen ministering angels for angels and ministering spirits to us who will inherit salvation. Upon the word of God in Hebrews 1.14. So be it. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. So be it. All right, so let's go, let's go and worship uh, together. And then we're going to close this. I've gone a little bit over. One hour. But in worship, there is victory. In worship is the presence of God. And the presence of God is the fullness of joy. So let us worship together. God bless you. The song is called Magnified. Be magnified by Steve Swanson. Let's worship together. Hallelujah. I will give you honor. With my hands. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Lamb of God, was slain for the beginning of our sins. Sanctify us, Lord my God. If my voice Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. I will give you honor. Yes. You're worthy to receive honor and glory, King of Kings. You are worthy. I lift my yes, Lord. hands. You are worthy to receive honor and glory, King of Kings. We magnify Jesus. Be glorified, Jesus. Be glorified, Lord my God. Jesus be lifted. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are above all creation, Lord. You are the firstborn of all creation. Hallelujah. Be glorified, Jesus be lifted above all the earth. That's amazing. Sing it with me again. How be magnified, be glorified. Jesus be lifted high <laughs> above all the earth. Yeah, be magnified and be glorified. Jesus be lifted high above all the earth. I will give you glory, the glory you deserve. I lift my voice to sing your praise. That's awesome. I will give you honor, the honor that you're due. I will lift my hands to bless your name. Say it. Be magnified. Be glorified. Worship Jesus. Be lifted. Let us worship together. Hallelujah. Ura baba bashika taramandi, ri baba bashika taramandi ri boshaka ya. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way in us. Have your way, my Lord, my Savior. Have your way in our souls. Ura baba bashika baba bashaka ya. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Jesus be with Hallelujah. 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 To the ends of the earth, the ends of the earth, and your glory is shining. Ora baba baba shikaya, riba baba baba shanda, riba baba baba shika charamande bo shakaya. Have your way, Holy Spirit. To the ends of the earth, the ends of the earth, and your glory is shining above the heavens. Hallelujah. Hurra, mama, 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 Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hurra, mama, 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 have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Alpha and Omega. Jesus, Jesus. Lamb of God, those the forgiveness of our sins. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We magnify Jesus. You are worthy to receive honor and glory. Jesus, have your way. Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of our sins. Yes, Lord, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Not loving our lives even unto death. So be it in the mighty name of Jesus. For you say, Lord my God, through your servant Habakkuk 2.14, that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of your glory. As the waters cover the sea, so be it, Lord my God. And you call for us to arise and shine, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Though darkness shall cover the earth and darkness the people, Yet the glory of the Lord, you say, Lord my God, shall be seen upon us. So be, Lord my God, let your light so shine, outshine the darkness. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, so be it. And as we close, this is the word of God for you. Even as Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself to be of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. That is how humble God was, how humble Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yes, he was God, and he is still God, will forever be God. And being found in appearance as a man, Yet he humbled himself him, and became obedient. Being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself. Being a form of God, yet in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. 
Gura Bamashake. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Praise the Son of a living God. So be it. In the name of our voice, the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of Lords. Riba Shandra Babashika Taramandiribu Shakaya. Riba Baba Shandra Babashakaya. And so I join the saints to say, Let the name of the Lord be magnified. Let him receive honor and glory because it belongs to him and him alone. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, be glorified in the name above all names. So be it. And they sang a new song, saying in Revelation 5, verse 9, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. So be it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Bashan, Rabba Shakaya. And what a God declares in Revelation 5, verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Oh, Rabba Bashakaya, the elders and the four living creatures, and the number of them was 10, oh, Rabba Shakaya, uh, 10,000 and times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of believers singing and saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, yes, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, yes, this is going to happen right now. We must worship God. For there is a time, there is a time, let me tell you, when there will not be time to see the day. But now we have light. That light is Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let us worship him. It says, blessing and honor. The scripture said, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So be it. In the name of Jesus, then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. And we are to worship him. We bow down, Jesus. We bow down. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, have your way. Any pride in our hearts, anything in our hearts that is not yours. If there's anything in our hearts that is not yours, any any stubbornness rebelliousness lord uproot it that we may worship you in spirit and in truth in the name of jesus the name of our names so be it may god bless you abundantly so i'm gonna close because my time is up but christ is coming back soon and he's coming back for a holy and unblemished child friends let us put our hearts right with god it is not for us yes to put our hearts right but when we are obedient yes that is what i mean to the holy spirit submit to the holy spirit and let the Holy Spirit work in and through you that you may be sanctified, purified, that at the return of Christ, we should be found blameless in spirit, soul, and body. May the God of peace himself sanctify you holy in spirit, soul, and body. That at the return of Christ, you may be found blameless in the name of our names, in the name of Jesus Christ. So be it. God bless you abundantly. And we'll learn some more tomorrow in the hour of word and prayer. God bless you.